How's it going folks? Welcome back to a brand new episode of Friday Night Live. I'm back again this week. It seems like the lockdown's going to be extended, so I'm going to be extending the Friday Night Live series. Tonight guys, I'm joined by stand-up comedian and a good friend of mine, Sinead Quinlan. Hopefully Sinead will be able to join us in just a quick sec. This is actually her first live and for some reason I'm really nervous, as is she, she's told me. So hopefully... Sinead will be on in just a quick sec. Uh, for any of you that don't know, Sinead has got her own series on the RT player called Seriously Sinead. And she's also on the den at the moment. So it's can't wait to chat with her all about her budding comedy career as well as so much more. So hopefully she won't be too long and she'll be coming on in just a quick sec. So guys, thanks so much for tuning in. How's it going? Thank you so much for joining me on this Friday night. Hello, Ger Buckley. Shout out to you down in Dunmore. I hope the weather is nice below there. A lovely part of the world. So guys, hopefully Sinead will be coming on. There'll be absolutely nothing worse than being stood up. There she is. Woo! So I'm going to see there. Can I get Sinead on? Here we go. I'm going to send her a quick request. I hope everything's okay below. It didn't even crash repairs. I'd say you're still open for service uh, during this level five. So if anyone needs their car service, call into Karen Deneen in the Deneen crash repairs. Here comes Sinead. Hello, Sinead. Hi. <laughs> Sinead, I've never been so nervous for a live. And I think that's because I know, I actually know, know you. Do you know that type of a way? Yeah, I know. We've so a weird. bit more to lose. Exactly. I know. We're just like, all right, we've got to be professional. <laughs> absolutely and Sinead it was so it's so great to have you on because I was actually I've been a big fan of yours anyway before the comedy stuff as you know but oh my god your comedy stuff is hilarious and like I I wouldn't find everything funny but it's so so good um, I um, actually finished what? off watching the seriously Sinead uh, serious, seriously Sinead series the other night Jesus that's a mouthful but oh my god hilarious stuff but before we get on to all that, Sinead, for anyone out there now that doesn't know who you are, do you want to tell us a small bit about yourself? Because I, I know who you are. <laughs> who am I? Do you know who am I? This is like one of those questions that like you're going to have an identity crisis. Do you know what I mean? You're like, who, who am I? Um, so I'm Sinead uh, from Cork. Uh, I'm a stand-up comedian and I'm a writer in uh, I'm I was on The Den, which is amazing. Uh, I think that was the best thing to ever happen in 2020, like, the dental back. And, like, um, touching on all that, Sinead, I suppose, like, we, we'll go back to the start. Like, you're a social care worker by trade, but you're, you've got this comedian's uh, career on the side. So how does one go from, we'd say, a social care worker, which is an important job, to something, we'd say, the complete opposite? Is it just an escapism for you? Or, and, and how did you get into it first day? Oh, stop. So, like, I finished the two-year master's and then, like, I was just like, okay, I'm just going to take some time out. Like, do you know what I mean? Just do something else. And uh, my parents were like, really? Really? You're going to you're gonna not do the, the master's? You know what I mean? You're not going to work with what you qualify? Uh, oh, I see my housemate there. Hi from the living room. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you know what, actually, Sinead, before we go any further, I do apologise for any of the comments the lads do send in. They're hilarious. Don't kill Lynch there now. Hope he behaves himself tonight. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah what was I even saying oh yeah I did masters how did it happen I don't really know I just decided I've been in college for like maybe six years straight you know and I was like Jesus the idea of going into a nine to five after that was just like I can't like I, mean, I need to have some time you now to just do random things like before I kind of you know have no life um so yeah like the stand-up thing is kind of like just a bucket list thing really do you know what I mean I said I'll do it once and see what goes and uh it's just kind of one thing led to another and then here I am <laughs> and like touching on that Sinead I've just realized as well the two of us are matching uh this was not planned oh, no, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, I just realized that this is the first time ever I've matched with someone I'm interviewing but uh Sinead uh <laughs> go back to the yeah, we're we're on the same wavelength. But uh, with with the comedy career, was it something that like you just said, do you know what? I'm gonna give this a go. And how did you get into it day one? Yeah, like I think it probably would have shocked a good few people, do you know, that I was doing it like like I would have been funny like in my group of friends, but like I'm not this kind of a loud like person, do you know what I mean, in the middle of a party, like that was never me. Um but oh, like I was kind of doing videos on here on Instagram. And then I was like, do you know what? Like a few people had said it to me. Like they'd messaged me, like you should give stand up, bro, whatever. And I was like, sure, why not? Like I just kind of felt like 
sure you've nothing to lose. Like, at least when, you know, when I'm in the nursing home, I did to say, like, oh, I tried that there once, you know. <laughs> but um, I don't know. Like, comedy is weird because, like, you don't exactly need to be qualified in anything. Really. <laughs> to be in it, like, you just got to decide that, like, you're a comedian. Dude. That's, that's kind of it. Like, nobody can stop you. <laughs> it's, do you know what it's probably a great career for anyone out there that's probably in between jobs at the moment have a go off it it might be something uh, that you're very good at yeah I know well it seems kind of gone these days like but well, when it'll be back it's a good and, one and we'd say Sinead I think you did something like four gigs if my research has done me right uh, and then you yeah. entered Ray Darcy's uh, stand up and be funny competition how did you just put yourself forward for that after doing a couple of gigs in around Cork City? It was actually my dad saw that. Um, so I'd actually only done two gigs ever um, when he saw the thing in the paper. So it was so funny. We were actually in Hillbys at the time. We were eating a taco fries. <laughs> <laughs> Pure <laughs> Cork. <laughs> as, as you do, like as every career starts over a taco fries. And he's like, oh, I was reading this thing the other night about... Um, this competition, like whatever, and he'd been to my second gig. Like I was like, Dad, I've done two gigs. Like <laughs> you know, I, I don't, I don't know. And he was like, Well, they're looking for new people, you know, like people who you have to have been doing stand up for under two years. And I mean, I'd only done two gigs, so I definitely fit the uh, the quota. But I was like, Sure, look it. I just throw it in. Do you know what I mean? So you had to have like, um, I think it was like a two or three minute clip. And again, dad had videos. So it's literally dad, my dad just got this career for me. Like, um, so we sent that in and then I thought no more of it. I mean, I heard nothing for ages. I was like, oh, whatever. I was actually meant to be moving to Australia. And then I got literally the day before I was going in to book like my visa, my flights and all that. I got an um, uh, email saying that I was in the Monster Flame for that. So weird, like weird how things work out. <laughs> Oh my God. And we'd say like, they, they whittled it down because I, I actually watched, I, I have to do a good bit of research over for these. I don't just got to go in as, as it may seem uh, unresearched, but we'd say with the, with that, so there was a monster final and then you had to bring that set. They whittled it down. But like, was that like really nerve wracking? Because we'd say you've only done two gigs and I, I assume you got a good reception at those two gigs. The fact you wanted to keep going. But yeah. like, Particularly with your first gig, were you very nervous going on the stage? Because you seem so comfortable. I know. I think I'm one of these people, I could probably mask my nerves quite well. Do you know, it's a, it's a talent. It's a talent I have. <laughs> like, I could be really nervous and you probably won't be able to tell. Like, I actually got more nervous after, like, winning the competition rather than before. Because, like, I was kind of the underdog the whole time. And then, you know, once you win something, people kind of expect something of you then, you know. But like I still had only done like seven gigs when I won the thing, like so it was crazy. It was crazy. And stand up is very it's kind of a I mean it's probably the most vulnerable you could possibly be. You know what I mean? You're going up on stage, it's just you, like you've nobody really to fall back on, like it goes our way, it's like goes our way. <laughs> and <laughs> has has that ever that. happened to you where you, you've you've said a joke and you just didn't get anything back? Or has the audience always been your friend in that sense? Yeah, like only once ever go quite badly. I think it was that a lot of my material, especially at the start, I mean, I, I barely had any material to be honest, but like, it was very Irish, you know, like real Irish. And uh, one particular night, there was a lot of people like on holidays from like different countries. And like, I think it was just like, just wasn't like going in. It's just that culture, different cultures. Like, but um, yeah, I mean, it's kind of a rite of passage. You have to have the bad ones too. Like, and we'd say touching on that, you, know, you won, you won to stand up and be funny. And then, of course, COVID hit us after that. Am I right there at the timelines intersecting there? Is that right? Yeah, literally, like I literally won it in December. And she then, like I got a few gigs or whatever, but like nothing was really getting going. Do you know what I mean? Like it was literally, I was only like just starting. And like I have that in the series as well. Um, I say that like at the, the start of series Sinead. So the career was just going and then boom. Uh, global pandemic and we'd say seriously Sinead came off the back of winning the competition so like in terms of we'd say like that was one thing my housemate here even said to me he said oh like he was like oh did she was she she's clearly an actress and she's got all, all this experience because I was showing him some of your stuff today but like was that something that like you just have to like improvise almost for for the show yeah how, how do you training? Um, 
like that's that's a good point i was only thinking of the other day like someone was saying like would you consider yourself like an actress and i was like again I, i've done no no training <laughs> like, because, because me chanting my arm like basically in my entire life um but yeah i suppose i kind of am like I, i'd love to actually go back to do like properly do you know what i mean to go back to some college do like some works on, on acting and just performing in general you know well, you're, you're, you're doing fairly well now. There's a lot of people that have probably point their arm off that have studied it. But, like, you, you see, like, you, I was watching it there, and your man was like, oh, she's clearly trained in it. And I was like, I actually don't mm-hmm. think so. And you filmed in around Cork City, uh, which is gas, like, and all those other actors that appear in the show. I think I know one of them to see uh, Dennis O'Sullivan. And my yeah. wife, he's the, he was the, was he the, the butcher for the Yeah, Cardi. he knew anyone himself. My dad, the only people I knew. Uh, so me and Dennis, he actually works in that shop. Um, so I knew that he could actually cook the corn and beef. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. Um, well, because we did like kind of a, just ourselves. It was like the Christmas day um, after I won the competition. We just did it for a laugh. Do you know what I mean? Like our own little video in the shop on Christmas day. So then when I was making it, I was like straight away, I thought of him. It was like, because he's so funny. Like, and he's honestly like, his facial expressions just made that entire scene it was so good like the, he really got the, the stress of it all out like and that that corned beef sketch in particular like you 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 did that at the final and it also made it into the show what obviously that actually happened to like because i know some comedians kind of hear other stories and use them in your material like is, did that actually happen to you where you, you started roaring at the, the the deli assistant or whatever yeah, about the corned beef it happened i would say like, I'd say 80% of my comedy is real. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, it's stuff that happens. Like, some of it's not real. I mean, to be fair, now, like, things are exaggerated to a certain extent. Do you know what I mean? Like, there wasn't actual sweat tripping off my face. Um, but, yeah, like, I think the real things are better. Like, I find, anyway, I find it very hard to, like, do something on something that didn't happen. Do you know what I mean? Like, if I'm, if I'm telling a story, there has to be some element of truth there. Otherwise, I won't be able to kind of, like say it at all I don't know I know I know what you mean and it, even we'd say I see there a comment will you come and film the next series in Dunamore uh, is there a next series of Sears Sinead and will it be filmed in uh, Sonny's home state of Dunamore a beautiful Dunamore. area to film a well guess what my mom's actually from Dunamore yeah I'm Dunamore oh really <laughs> I, that explains now because all these Dunamore crowd they never be watching my lives normally so I was wondering what's after drawing them out <laughs> yeah. of Sonny there being hibernation most of the time so shocked that he's even on the call tonight but that's that's gas and we'd say with with the series doing so well and even it was on RT2 as well it's not just on the RT player is there plans now for season two yeah there is there is and um, so nothing is like I mean you never really know until it's you know actually happening but um I mean I'm writing at the moment and it's looking pretty positive that there will be more like so yeah Absolutely. Well, guys, if anyone is looking for something to watch tonight, go and watch Seriously, Sinead. It is hilarious. And I watch Saturday Night Live every Sunday morning on YouTube after it comes out in the States. So, like, that would be the kind of level of comedy I, I'd find funny. And genuinely, Sinead, you're on par with them. And I'd love to see an Irish sketch, sketch show even like that. Um, but he, even speaking of that, like, you're still on the TV with The Den. Uh, clearly, you have a great relationship with Ray Darcy. But how does yeah, how does one get on that childhood dream show? Uh, because I think anyone in and around our age would have grown up with the den. So to actually be on it must be un- unreal. <laughs> oh my god! Like it's the den. Like it's the den. Uh, crazy. Like I'm not even crazy. Like and I don't know. I just, they rang me up. Like literally, there's no point. It's not an extravagant story at all. Like I was rang on the phone. I answered the phone. They were like, "Hey, um, we're the den is coming back." And uh, we have this role of the roving reporter, and the lads think that you'd be a good fit. Um, well, how are you fix? <laughs> <laughs> like, I was literally, I was looking at my phone, and I was just like, is this such sort of a joke? Like, <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm being right. Uh, but no, it's actually real. So, like, I suppose, to be fair, like you said, I did have that connection with Ray Darcy before. I mean, um, I like I joke at Ray like that I'm like oh he's like uh, my show is that man you know <laughs> yeah yeah and like we'd say like working on that show is clearly a lot 
like again, I suppose, like you know, there's there's probably a lot of tenured people inside North E pitching for that role, and here you are just after landing it. What what's that? Was any of that daunting to you? Are you just you seem like very kind of happy go lucky with the whole thing? It's because it, it it's after landing on your lap almost. I am such a laid back person. Like I really am. Like I said, I tell you, I was even born two weeks late. Like apparently I was that laid back in the womb. You know, <laughs> I've just I've always been this way. And I just kind of I don't know. I just embrace everything. I'm just like you actually have nothing to lose. Like you have nothing to lose with anything you try. You know, and that's like that sounds so cheesy, but like that's why people don't go for things because they're afraid of things. You know what I mean? They're afraid of like looking like a fool. You know what I mean. I suppose the good thing with a comedian is that you can look like a fool. Do you know what I mean? That's kind of the goal. Um, the goal sometimes. Well, I'd make a great comedian socially. <laughs> <laughs> and we'd say, speaking of all the TV stuff, you're still going, you're, you're on the latest episode of uh, Clear History. What, what's mm-hmm. it like kind of working with other comedians then? Because is there a kind of a level of competitiveness or do you kind of bring the best out of each other? Um, no. It was actually, like, that was really different because, like, the den was live TV. So, and then the Clear History is, like, recorded. So it was really interesting seeing how that, like, works. So, like, with Clear History, you're actually there for hours. Like, it's really long. Like, uh, and then, uh, like, so when it was coming out, I was like, oh, I don't even know what's going to be like. And I was like, I can't even remember what I said. <laughs> it was such a long day. Um, but it was great. Like they're so different. Do you know what I mean? They're actually really, really different. So it's cool. Like learn all these things about how TV works as well. Do you know what I mean? Getting kind of insight. But, oh my God! You're no, you're, you're going to have to bring me with you when things get back to normal. Kevin McGarren and all them like they're like panic. Like so, I was again. It was a pure like pinchy moment. I was like, am I actually sitting here in this seat like with, with these bikes? Like, but uh, yeah. And you you touched on it there when when you were on Clear History. I saw the clip you put up about. Your story with Michael D. Higgins. Do you want to do you want to share that story with us? Because I, I thought it was absolutely the most typical Irish story about somebody with with a story about the president I've ever heard. Literally, and like, and the whole show it was kind of like something like if nothing was planned in the show. Do you know what I mean? It's like just so happened. I think Kevin asked Joanne like if you could interview anybody, who would it be? And she was saying Michael D. Higgins. And then I was like, oh, I've actually played the violin for Michael D. Higgins. <laughs> They were all like turned to me as if say like what? <laughs> and I was like, so basically, there's a tree in Cardivar. It's actually the tree if you watch the series that I'm sitting under writing in the diary. Oh yeah, is is, is that oh, that's filmed on site in Cardivar, right? For yeah. I, I didn't realize that. Very exotic locations. Extremely, it was a great day. Cardivar looked great. <laughs> um, but he came. So that tree. Apparently there's a load of, I know I said apparently, it's true, there is a load of poets uh, from the area and um, they've loaded plaques like around the tree or whatever. I think it was like Wales, or, I might be wrong there, I think it was Wales at some point. But um, anyway, obviously Michael Dieter, he loves your poetry. Do you know what I mean? He'd be mad for a poem. Uh, so he came down for this like, official opening of this plaque and um, as everything happens, uh, my family are kind of musical so uh, I happened to be asked well they were asked and I just kind of jumped on board to play and I played the violin like about two years I mean but I was like oh should I go on and call it down with you guys uh, so there I was up on top of a truck so it's one of those uh, flatbed trucks you know they open like on the side and like I think it was a pretty funny day like but so it was alright I mean there was no big draft coming in but uh, up we were on the truck playing away but uh, yeah it was a claim to fame <laughs> Well, well, clearly you got the performance uh, in the family, so because that explains mm-hmm. that explains that you're surrounded by talented musicians, so it, it rubbed off on you a bit. And I suppose, Sinead, when when the world goes back to some bit of normality, are you planning a bit of a an Irish tour, or what? What is your plan next for uh, Sinead, or are you just going to keep doing what you're doing at the moment? Uh the plan. I mean, I never really have any plan. <laughs> You'll have an Oscar now I next. That's plan. all very short. <laughs> like, I should have a plan. Like, but I suppose the plan, like, oh, God, I feel so lucky. Like, I can actually hand and heart there. I'm doing something now that I actually love. Like, and I actually found it accidentally nearly. But, like, everything I do, obviously, I mean, the writing and stuff, like, it's, it's long and, like, you know, the editing and all that. But, like, I, I enjoy every part of it. Like, I just feel very lucky to be able to say that. So, I presume the goal is just to kind of continue in this uh 
in this career, I don't know where it's going to take me. Like, I, I have no idea. But I just go with the road and see what happens. <laughs> Well, you're definitely on the right track today. My God, well, you, you've done so much. And, and like we'd say, given the circumstances, it's a terrible time to be trying to do it. And you're doing amazing. So well done. And Sinead, I suppose I can't have you on without discussing a bit about the Cork Rose girls, because that's actually how I know you is through the, the Cork Rose, the Trillian yeah. selection, um, to the gas crack. But we'd say like doing something like that I suppose it's probably great for the confidence number one you got a bit of stage experience out of that but you want to tell us a little bit about uh, how you got on at that and maybe a little bit about your friendship with the girls I see Pamela is commenting there so I said yeah. I have to give it a mention oh the Cork Rose like again this was another thing that I tried um, it was kind of like a, a bucket list thing again so that was when was the Rose was that like April May Oh my God. Do you, do you know what? It, doesn't it feel like a lifetime ago? It's not even that long. Yeah. I'd say it was nearly two years ago now because we missed all of last year. But yeah, yeah. like it, 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 it's a like, great, great do, experience. I didn't do the stand up till like October. So that was way after the rose. Like the rose was like one of the first things I did. Um, and again, like you said, like it's pure like just for confidence and like going up on stage and just like talking about yourself or just talking in general on a stage is a good start. Uh, and like I know I get it's so cheesy like but um I didn't expect to like actually make friends at it. Do you know what I mean? Like, I was just like, you know, I didn't know what people were gonna be like, were they gonna be like super competitive or like what was the story? But uh all the girls were so simple. Do you know what I mean? Like nobody I don't think there's anyone actually came with like a friend. Do you know what I mean? Like there's very few actually came with somebody they knew. Like, everyone was there kind of by themselves. And, like, literally friends for life. Like Pamela. Like, I hadn't met Pamela before. Uh, Pamela wasn't even in it that year. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that didn't tell you how good, that didn't tell you how good it all is that you just become friends with people that you aren't even in the team. <laughs> <laughs> it was Marie, it was in it. And, uh, oh. I mean, Marie, like, because there's so many girls. I was like, I, I was terrible for names. So I mean, I never gonna remember a name. So, like, I remember when I met Marie, we were like, oh, Marie, Sinead, we, we'll surely remember this. <laughs> like, that was really how our friendship started. And then Pamela is friends of Marie, so that's how it all happened. But yeah, like I talk to the girls all the time. Like I have a load of friends from there, so I definitely recommend it. I mean, it gets that slack, do you know what I mean? And I suppose it can be a bit cheesy at times. Yeah. But um, <laughs> like just friends alone, like it's definitely worth giving the lash. It, yeah, it, and it's worth for going out on the lash afterwards. It's a great session. <laughs> Oh you, my you god! Savage like, amount of nights out of it. Like, like, you get nothing else. Me, like I've never been to the Rose Tree. I couldn't believe the crack. Like the absolute banter every day and night was just insane. Like I've never experienced. It was like rag week times ten. Like it was insane. Yeah. I I had to drive back to Galway in the middle of the week that time just to get new clothes because I'd come in from Spain and I went straight down to it. It was mad for a few days. Came back, slept for like 12 hours. Went straight back down again. It is absolute. I can't wait for it to come back. Hopefully now. I know. With a bit definitely. of normality. But I can see you now definitely giving Dahi a run for his money in terms of uh, the host, Junaid. <laughs> or at least co-hosting with him if he won't give up the seat. I know. Who knows? Who knows? I know. I haven't really done like presenting as such. Like I suppose like the role of reporter isn't really like a presenting job. Do you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say no to anything. I'd give anything a lash, like, so, yeah. <laughs> and we, we, we'd say, who's been, like, the kind of the best crack you, like, I suppose, out of all these experiences, particularly with, like, the Dan and stuff, like, how much of a mentor has Ray Darcy been? And, like, has has have you looked for advice off anyone else, maybe, besides Ray? He's honestly, he's actually the nicest man ever. Like, he's just so kind. Um... He's very, like, he, he'd say stuff to uh, like, on the side, like, just, like, just talking about something, or, like, I mean, to be fair to poor old Ray as well, like, I'd go up to him, like, we'd be going live at, like, half six, I'd go up to him, like, 20 past six, being like, actually, Ray, I'm thinking of changing there everything that I was going to do before. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> but, like, I guess that was just kind of what the show was, like, but then it's just kind of, it's very off the cuff, like, you're not really sure what's going to happen. Um, but they were great, like, and uh, Zig and Zag and Dustin, like, the, the puppeteers are actually so nice, like, so lovely. And uh, you could talk to them about anything as well. And they were always, like, very, like, they really wanted me to feel comfortable and for me to, like, be myself, you know. And um, I think that's probably what helped too. I didn't feel like I had to be 
a certain thing like I was just kind of being myself uh, which of course takes pressure off like just being your own show, like. <laughs> <laughs> well absolutely well, that's great to hear because I, I know the world of TV can be a bit daunting for a lot of people but like that's great that they're so open which I mean, that's probably why you got the job ahead of maybe more tenured people is you probably don't have that kind of difficulty to work with that some people might bring with them, the baggage. You might bring a different type of baggage. But, she'll, um, she'll throw Sinead there and she'll do whatever. Like, yeah, literally, I'll do anything. And Sinead, <laughs> I suppose I can't have you on without asking you, when you were growing up, did you ever, because I know I did loads of this, did you ever send in a picture to the den, like a drawing or anything, to be featured? Or was it ever featured? No, we didn't. Uh, but me and my brother, Eamon, uh, he's two years younger than me, and it was just like our go to thing. Like, do you know what I mean? Um, every time we come home from school, do you know what I mean? Two of us watching it, like, just loving it. Because the day used to be on for hours before, like, <laughs> yeah. like to be on all day, like, sitting, like, <laughs> sitting in programs, all that. So, like, it was a real, it was a whole evening, like, to then. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the when it came back then, it was just like, I, when I was actually on it too, like, I was just like, this is just insane, like, do you know what I mean? Especially for my brother, he was like, Two of us like eating cereal, watching this. And now you're on it, like. Yeah, that, that's what it is. Like, I must tell you a good one. When I was younger, I was like, I was mad for the for the den as well. But I used to send in like different drawings of Saki the sock monster and all that sort of jazz. Aww. I'd say I was sending them in on a regular, like, right. But I could never get the fucking photo up when they, you know, they'd be like, oh, here's the photos that were sent in this week. Never ever no. sent. Um, oh, so, no. <laughs> and the only one that I ever sent in, and I don't know why I drew this photo, but I drew like sister, sister, and the fecky thing was shown, and the lads in school absolutely roasted me about the uh, fact that like, I watched it. Why not you show like sister, sister was unreal. Such <laughs> oh, a but, um, oh man, I said yeah. they get hundreds and stuff. And you know what they were doing actually with the, the den was they were contacting people who had sent in stuff from years ago. Do you know what I mean? So it was cool. Oh yeah, I've seen that. I, I've seen a lot of that. They had um those was the fans of boys on or something they had on as well. Yeah. It's gas. Yeah, really cute, like. I know. And it's mad now to think like that people have kids as well, like that they were watching it with their kids, like that whole generational thing that like, was cool. Like. So the whole new generation now know who does in the turkeys, like on it. Yeah, Jesus, that's gas. And I suppose you don't play the game what's not anymore, do you, on it? Because I know there's that viral tip. Have you ever seen oh, that? Oh, that is the best tip ever. Like, it just oh. never gets old. Yeah, you should definitely try and get that young fella. I, I think your man um, can't think of the, what's that? What's the guy, the presenter's name oh, that had him? Oh, Damien. Damien, I believe, is it? Yeah, oh. Is it Damien? There was a few of them. Yeah, well, he anyway had a reunion yeah. with your man because I think he's on Ocean FM up in Sligo, I believe. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I've seen that actually. A, a random fact for anyone that does miss that presenter, check him out. But um, no, no, that's gas. I'd, I'd love to see what's not to be brought back because, like, oh, to try and keep a straight no, face with the kids. And Zuffy is so cute. I actually, when I seen Zuffy the first time, I, I proper screamed. Like, I actually screamed. It's like, oh my God. All right. Yeah. Oh my God. Well, come here, Sinead. You're doing a great job, and I must say, well done tonight on your very first live stream. You wouldn't even know you hadn't been on. I'm. I. I look like the amateur here, not you. Well, Sinead. I I, before you go, Sinead, I must ask you: Have you anything planned, or can you give us maybe a bit of your new material if you have something ready? Uh, do I have anything planned? Uh, I suppose I'm still seriously, Sinead. Again. Uh, round two. Um, that's kind of my plan, really. That's all I'm working on right now. Uh, just writing the whole thing. Just writing, 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 writing. Working. People are saying we're matching again. Yeah, we are matching, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what, Sinead? I'm very proud of the lads because they've been very mild. They can be very, very, very crude. So I'm delighted they've been very mild. Well, Sinead, it's been a pleasure having you on. I'd like to thank you so much for coming on. And stay safe, and we'll meet up soon when it's safe yeah. to do so for I a Rose reunion. This is really good. Thanks so no much. No worries. I'll talk to you later, Sinead. It's always bye. weird ending these things. I'll see you later. Yeah, bye. Bye. Good luck.